For the American man, Ted Ligety again leads the charge. At 31 years old, he looks ahead to another season of World Cup racing. Ted won World Championship gold in Giant Slalom in 2015, and this season has his sights set on winning his first overall title. He joins us now from his home in Park City, Utah, to chat about this season, which is his 11th on the World Cup circuit. How are you, Ted? Doing good, and you? I'm doing all right. You know, it, it sounds like you had a good summer of training in New Zealand and Chile. Despite the miles you skied over the years, how important is it that you have that time of prep heading into the 2016 season? I'm the kind of guy that actually likes to ski a lot, a lot of miles all summer long. And so having a good prep period definitely is important for me. It helps me get my confidence going and, and it makes me you know, feel more certain about my skiing and, and helps me kind of make those little adjustments and improvements. So. Um, we had a great camp down in New Zealand, um, basically no weather days, great snow conditions the whole time, and then a very good camp down in Portillo, Chile as well. So um, definitely a large step forward as far as conditions-wise in the summertime compared to last year. Is Solden a litmus test for the rest of the season in Giants Fallen? Um, Solden's kind of different from a lot of the races just because it is the first race of the year. Most of us haven't trained with other teams. so. It's always a little bit of a mystery on who's really skiing that fast. Um, so it's, you know, carries that little bit extra anxiety with it. Um, but then again, if you don't do awesome in Solden, it's, you know, there's a big gap between the next giant salon race. It's another month and a week, I guess. So you have a lot of time to kind of sort things out if things go awry. Um, but it is always nice to like get the confidence rolling right off the bat. 2016 is a year without in Olympic Games and at World Championships. Do your motivations switch in a year that doesn't have either of those two major events in it? I actually think it's really nice not having the World Champs or the Olympics um, you know, this year, just because when you do have the World Championships and Olympics, every single race is talked about like preparation for the World Championships or Olympics. It's not about like the weekend, week out races, and there's always this like anticipation of this big looming event. And I think it's nice to just have the season focus in on the World Cup Tour and just, you know, the week grind and the week races and everything there. So I think that's that's cool to have that kind of focus on just the World Cup Tour. Last season, you won World Championship gold, but finished third in the Giant Slalom standings. Do you view last season as a disappointment or a success? I view last season as a pretty big disappointment, for sure. Um, if I didn't win that World Championship gold, um, it would have been, I guess, disastrous seeming. So, um, you know, definitely last year didn't go as well as I wanted to in a lot of regards. I mean, it's my worst year in Slalom basically since 2003. Um, and, you know, Giant Slalom didn't go all that well. You know, I had a lot of kind of bad luck and little little injuries here and there that kind of nagged at me and just wasn't able to find the groove. So um, last year definitely was uh, not ideal. <laughs> How has your approach maybe changed then towards the overall World Cup title this year? Is it still on your radar? Oh, the overall is definitely my big career goal. Um, that's something I really want to achieve. And so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's a lot of things have to play into my advantage, I guess, for the overall. I think, um, you know, in some ways every year they kind of stack it against me in a lot of ways because they keep adding these uh, these city events, which are basically essentially slalom races. and. Um, for me, I get seeded 16th or something, so I have to go against the one seed basically in the first round, which uh, you know kind of makes my uh, path there more difficult. And um, you know, Super Gs are more or less set in straight downhill, so you know I have a lot of things working against me. But at the same time, I feel like that if I get in a roll and, and get on a good groove for uh, a few races, I have a good chance. If you had to tailor make it, best case scenario for you to capture the overall, what would that be then? Taylor make the season? Yeah, if you, could, if you could pick it and lay it out perfectly for you to capture that overall, how does it play out this year? I mean, in the ideal world, you'd have most of the race in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be, I guess, the starting point, and then you know, make the Super Gs challenging, and um, yeah, I mean, that would be, I think, the biggest, the biggest key right there. I mean, for Americans, it's so much more difficult than, than it is for the Europeans, because we're traveling for the whole season straight i'm not going to go home um at all once i leave for beaver creek so um that's a that's a long time not being at home and the euros get to go home every weekend so you know the mental toll is a lot more difficult on on the north americans than it is on on the europeans so 
um, we've always had to kind of fight that disadvantage. Ted, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck this season, and we'll be talking with you soon. Thank you.